Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us on Great Day Houston. That was the Bell Lewis Band, and we'll hear more from them in just a little bit. America the Beautiful. The casualties of war are always a stark reminder of the high price our military pays for freedom. After almost 65 years, the remains of several fallen soldiers are finally back home in America. They died in the Korean War. Today, as we know, even when a soldier survives combat, the wounds, physical and emotional, can last a lifetime. 9-11 made an impression on our first guest, Sergeant Kendra Lou Garza. It motivated her to sign up for the United States Army. She feels her service taught her to overcome anything, but it has not been easy. She says, quite bluntly, war claimed my left leg and heroin tried claiming my life. So far, I'm winning this battle. She's here this morning to encourage other veterans going through a tough time. And the person who is her mentor is Army veteran Valerie James with Mental Health America of Greater Houston. Good morning. Good morning. You two are so awesome. The first thing she says when she sees me, and she goes, thanks for wearing the camo. Yes. <laughs> right. And those yeah. heels. Oh. It's definitely, yeah. yeah, definitely the heels. Oh, the heels I set it off <laughs> because <laughs> Going back to uh, that moment of 9-11, uh, you had a tough life growing up anyway. Your, mm -hmm. your dad had some issues in and out of, of prison, but your mom was kind of your rock and your role model. Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah, my mom, she uh, put herself through nursing school and raised three of us children on her own also working you know to put food and pay the bills and yeah. all that good stuff before 9 11 did you know what you wanted to do no i did and i was just a you know a high school kid and then i was um actually sitting in science class when 9 11 happened and that's when i kind of you know made that commitment to join the military yeah and valerie why did you decide to join the military survival i think i've been shot at more in the inner city than I have in the military. So. Wow. <laughs> All right. But, you know, it's interesting because we, we talked about the Korean War veteran and, and we've heard people say again, you know, bring our boys home, bring our boys home. Boys who left boys and became men. That's you right. You say you left as girls and became women. Mm -hmm. it, it teaches That's you so right. much. But today we also say bring our boys and girls home because women Amen. are closer to that battle line than ever before. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, what happens too is that we also see some of the things happening to women that usually happen mostly to men. Mm -hmm. um, so when you first signed up for the military, you had no idea what to expect, did you? No, none whatsoever. <laughs> what were your expectations? My expectations was to get a uniform, a maroon beret, and hopefully get stationed in Hawaii. Yeah. Okay, yeah, right. yeah nice. that's, you see the world. That was my expectations. Yeah, yeah, right? and what about for you? When, you, when you, you had an expectation and then what's the reality of it? Uh, you know what, my expectation worked. My expectation was to get out of where I grew up and hopefully become saner than I was. Yeah. And, and both worked out beautifully. Well, I'm one thing proud. about the military is it does provide structure, doesn't it? It does. A lot. It yeah, really yeah. does. Whether right. you want it or not. <laughs> but, but, yeah, whether you want it or not. Yeah, right. but a big difference between what you thought that you're going to Hawaii. Yes. You ended up where? I ended up in Germany, um, attached to the 173rd Combat Brigade as a combat MP, kicking in doors, you know, right there, pounding the ground with our Cav Scouts, doing everything, you know, a man would do. Jumping out of planes. Jumping out of planes, you know, training Afghan polies. So there was only four females out there where I was. Yeah. And you too were in a different world. Yeah, it was amazing to be in Afghanistan is where I was stationed, and Germany. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then you grow up with knowing that, or you're in the atmosphere knowing that anything can happen at any time. Mm -hmm. And then it happened. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever it happened, I actually <clears throat> was on a dismount mission in Afghanistan. And, you know, things happen so fast. We're clearing this village. I'm coming to clear. I, you know, we're in a stagger formation, walking, dismounted. And I got an alley coming up on my left. So I go to clear left and bam. They had placed an IED in the out, outer wall of this building. So they had a spotter that detonated it. Well, whenever this explosion went off, I thought it was one of my battle buddies, you know, until I started going to the ground. Wow. Yeah. Right. At what point did you realize the extent of your injuries? I, that's kind of a trick question because I knew within me that I lost my leg. But, you know, I kept asking my battle buddies and they're like, no, you're fine. 
you know, you're going to make it home. And so, you know, it's, I can't really answer that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, it, but it's hard because the first thing that you have to say to yourself is, okay, I'm alive. Yes. I'm alive. Mm -hmm. But then things are going to change. And Valerie, for so many veterans, things change anyway when you come home and transition into civilian life. And so, does. And that's been a tough transition. We've seen that for a lot of folks who were in that battlefield. And so you add to it uh, an injury, and, and that's why the job that you do is so important as a peer counselor. Yeah, I mean, I, it, all we do is give back. Uh, it's, when we came, we come back, the camaraderie is lost, and that's like losing a, your soul, your heart, it's all gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't feel normal anymore. And yeah. to have to understand that, to help people, that's just us regaining our camaraderie back at the same time. So it's kind of selfish as well. Yeah, but you're with Mental Health America of Greater Houston, as I mentioned. How important is it for you to have somebody to hold your hand and say, I get it, I was in the same combat zone. I understand and you're going to be okay. How important was it for you to look at her and go, she's thriving, she's gonna be okay. And I so mean, it means I'm gonna be okay. It's life changing, you know, like she said, whenever you get out of the military, you're completely lost, you know, and you feel all alone. So to have someone to reach down there and grab your hand and pull you up to them is life changing. Yeah. You were like so many people who you dealt with pain medication to deal with your injuries. Mm -hmm. A drug addiction was something that was, although it was in your family, was n not the thing, the path that you ever thought you no, would go down. No, never. And then you transitioned into the heroin addiction. Mm -hmm. And then you talk about being lost. That's one of those things that can make a lot of people feel like they're helpless and hopeless, even though you were somebody who could stand up and fight alongside the guys. <laughs> this is the thing that was taking you down. I mm -hmm. love your quote when you say, um, you know, the war claimed your leg. Heroin tried to claim your life. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, the transition was not easy as well, was it? No, the transition was not. Uh, people ask me, well, what made you homeless? And I tell them, I did, because I didn't want to be around people anymore. It was easier going back to the chaos, which in this case was homeless, versus just sit, sit around sip, sipping lattes in this, what seems like yeah. a fake new You disconnected. You're like, I want nothing to do with anything right now. You had to, it's almost like having uh, a, a mental break where you have to just say, I have to disconnect from everything. That's exactly, that's well put. That's exactly what happened. All right. When we come back, I want to ask you both what your coming to Jesus moment was. Okay. The moment when you said, <laughs> I can no longer deal with heroin. I, I have to decide today whether I'm going to live or die. Mm -hmm. And the moment when you said, I can reintegrate myself into society, find my passion, find my cause and live life to the fullest. We'll be right back. 